the ghouls wrap up the 1970 Lemon Twist Roadrunner to reveal it to its eager owners. What if it's disappointing? Yeah. This is the time of year that we always go out and start looking for our new projects for next season and next year. I sent Mike over to Bend to pick up our next one, which is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, 383 four-speed lemon twist yellow. What makes this little car cool is it's an identical twin, option-wise, to the one that the guy who has it now had in high school and had to sell because the family always gets in the way. And now it's his time to relive his childhood. As soon as Mike gets back with the Roadrunner, uh, I want to get Alyssa, move the car inside, and do an inventory with her. This is a great opportunity for her to learn the VIN numbers, what should match, what shouldn't match, what a good car is to start with, and what isn't a good car. So these are the things I'm doing to acclimate her with the business. Uh, it's also one of the things that we do on every single car before it gets disassembled and sent off to the Media Blaster. You know, this is a nice little Roadrunner to start with. Uh, it's a great example of an older restoration that probably wasn't done by a Mopar expert, but that's why the owner sent it to us, was to get it done right. This is gonna be a two-fold learning thing for you. So one is what cars shouldn't look like when they're done getting restored. And you, it's gonna be another car that we inventory so we can have it on our insurance list, so we can have it ready for the disassembly, which needs to happen right away. So first, what I wanna do is just give it a quick wash, okay? Okay. You can remember something how to wash a car? Yeah. Yeah. Found something car. you can do. Okay. Not intimidated about this task. All right. All right. Let's see just how. Now don't get crazy. Let's see what you remember I know the about first, washing I know the, the car. first. The one thing I remember is you soaking me every single time. If you ain't wet, you ain't working. Oh, my hair. With the Roadrunner washed and documented, Mark walks us through the brake assembly. So what you see here is the original K member that the car started life with. This is a 70 Roadrunner 383 car. So all the components that are on it, the sway bar, the sway bar brackets, the strut rods, the lower control arms, they look beautiful because we've reconditioned them. We put our brand new PST performance suspension technologies, uh, suspension pieces in it. But that is at the point where it's ready for the spindles. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. So you see that I have this one marked 70 B body drum. This is the point, this is the key point right here. The one in my left hand, this backing plate, this brake drum, these brake shoes. That would give you the manual drum or power drum brake setup. As far as that front end goes, you've got that front end if you've got manual drum brakes or if you've got disc, you've got that whole setup. It's which one of these you put on. Well, these fasten to a ball joint, it's that simple. This ball joint goes into the lower control arm, like that. What I put on that from here is gonna determine disc or drum. Here is our drum. I bolt this on right here where it goes with the two big fat bolts. I'll just give you a visual here, like that. And now I would put on my backing plate, which would go on next. After that, this great big bulky drum, then the brake shoes, and I would have a drum brake setup based on that knuckle. You would not know whether this car started life with it or without it based on just looking, because this is all Mopar components. Now we'll just step back. I want power disc. Let's put that spindle down, grab the Mopar factory part number. Everything that goes on this spindle is over the counter parts at any part store in the world. At that point, when I tighten these down, I caught, put a cotter pin in it. After that, I would put my disc brake spindle on. Then the knuckle, or the spindle, will be attached to the lower control arm. I will grab my rotor with its bearings in it. I will put it on there like that. I'll put my spindle mount on there next, and that will complete my disc brake setup. And if you look at it when it's done, it will look factory Mopar, because it is factory Mopar. I cannot encourage you enough to stay within the world of Mopar. Stay within the year, the make, and the model of options that could have gone on the car. In the case of the disc brakes, it makes assembling it a piece of cake, because they're all factory pieces that are meant to go together. It makes maintenance of it down the road so much easier. And it just makes sense that you're keeping it all within the family of Mopar.
or Plymouth Superbird tribute car is now ready with all of its basic structural metal work done to come off of the frame jig, get moved over to a rotisserie so we can do the Superbird conversion work to it as well as the mud and the finish work on it. That means we have a car ready to go on to it, our 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. A uh, lemon twist yellow, 383 four speed. It's got the original engine, non-original transmission. Uh, looked pretty nice at a glance, but once you start looking at it a little closer, you realize it needed the restoration. That's what we're getting ready to do. A new standard operating procedure that we're doing is before any car comes into this body shop for a body man to lay his hands on, every component he's going to need has to be accounted for. So that's what George and I are getting ready to do. We have all of our AMD sheet metal laid out. We're gonna go through, inventory it, make sure it's here, and then I can green light them to bring that car in and start working on it. We have a right hand quarter full. Doesn't look bad, nobody's damaged it. Got a rear body cross member. You got your trunk floor extensions, you got your Dutchman panel. Nice rear body panel, look at that. I love that they punch the actual holes for the word Plymouth in there. That's really cool. You got your step wells, you got your bumper reinforcement, you got your upper deck package tray reinforcement, you got your vertical lock support for the trunk, emergency brake bracket guides. Every single part is here that I ordered, every single part I could think of that we would need. While they're cutting the car apart, they'll be finding anything that we don't have, and I'll have everything out here in three to five days from AMD, so. I think you have everything here that you should be green light go anytime you want to, to put that together. Okay. All right, so with all that, the body guys are green light go, pull the other Roadrunner in, and start moving to the next stage. So I've been working on the 70 Roadrunner, and I'm at a point where it's time to get Mark to sign off on some things. I'm about ready to put the trunk floor in and just check over the things that I've been doing on it. This is a car that came in fairly decent shape. It was painted, looked good at a glance, but the owner was kind of a fanatic and it reminded him of his original car that he had. So he really wanted this one dialed into perfection. So you got your sections in. Yep. Are they the same length section on both sides? Yep. Good. And I metal finished them so you can't see where I spliced in. Yeah, don't. No, it is. looks very nice on the outside. No, I mean, you did good, bye. You, you did good. That looks good, buddy. I like Mark to sign off on things because it's really crucial to have everything exact. And if he signs off on it, then I know I'm good to go. And there's less chance of a mistake. All right, Pockets, let's go. Pockets, that's your name. <laughs> Pockets ain't my name. <laughs> <laughs> Pockets is your name. All right. <laughs> Now here's a little bit of trivia for you, Georgie. All right, Georgie boy. I know you don't know all the numbers and stuff like you should by now, but neither does Alyssa. They made a little over 20,000 two-door hardtop 383 Roadrunners in 1970. The standard transmission that came behind the 383 was a three-speed manual transmission. Okay. Now, out of that 20,000 plus, only 584 of them actually left the assembly line with the three-speed transmission. Meaning that when, they, when people bought the Roadrunners or when they ordered them, standard was the three-speed manual transmission. But out of 20,000 plus, only 584 still have the three-speed. People were optioning for the four-speed pistol grip shifter because it was the coolest shifter on the planet and the automatic transmission. Very few people wanted the three-speed. This is one of the 584 three-speed cars. Wow. That's kind of one of those trick things that while well, you think in your mind, well, that's really, really rare. Well, it is rare from a production value standpoint, how many they made, but it doesn't make it any more valuable. It probably decreases the value. Most people today are just like they were in 1970. They would rather have a 383 four-speed or a 383 automatic than a 383 three-speed. This car came to the owner that we're doing it for already being converted to a four-speed. So we sent that out to Brewers, having that four-speed rebuilt, and it's back now over with the drivetrain, which is also, by the way, almost done. Uh, so as soon as they're done in body here, we'll reunite all that and put it in. But this car will be on the road with a four-speed pistol grip shifter. Want a screw? <laughs> no, thank you on the want and just screw, trying to, you know? Just trying to appease to your bicurious nature. Uh, the car had got packed full of a lot of plastic filler uh, and 
appeared a lot better than it really was. If you look at it, by the time we're done, we're replacing almost every piece of sheet metal on the back half of the car, front rails and front inner, uh, fenders. So thank God again, we got Auto Metal Direct to, to be able to pick up the phone and call and order this stuff, because if, if we couldn't do this, we'd be knocking a 70 Roadrunner two-door hardtop or two-door post in the head, taking it away, or a satellite, or a sports satellite. We'd be taking a good, valuable, nice, potential car off the road to make this one whole again. Otherwise, that looks good, Georgie. 70 Roadrunner, 383. What transmission? Uh, Three-speed. Three-speed manual. How many did they build in the two-door hardtop? It came optional, what was it? I want to say 2,000 something, only 20, five, 20, 000, 20, 000 something, only 300. 500 and some rolled off the assembly line with a three okay. speed in it. So you listen to a little of it. Yeah. Over 20,000 cars were built, 383, two door hard tops. Out of that over 20,000, only 584 had a three speed manual transmission. 584. 584. All right. Let's try it out. Huh? Oh, I thought you. Oh, no. Said something. I'm very excited about the Roadrunner that's getting ready to be revealed to the Zinks. It's a neat car. It means a ton to those people. It's a very similar car to what he had back in high school. Those are the kind of things that I like the most. I don't, even though it's not a cubic dollar car, I actually enjoy the backstory and the, what it means to the people more so than the big dollar stuff and all the bragging about what something's worth. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. With the decals perfectly placed, it's time to get the engine and drivetrain installed. But before they can do that, the team needs to connect all of the necessary accessories in the engine well and on the firewall. Now it's time to begin the installation of the engine and drivetrain. They begin with the rear end in order to counterbalance the car when it's time to install the engine. Then, much like the assembly line, the unibody is lowered over the engine and bolted into place. Tires and wheels are assembled and bolted down. The accurate exhaust system is installed. The beautiful instrument specialties dash is rested into place. Followed by the installation of the signature pistol grip shifter and interior. So I've got my 70 Roadrunner all set up and ready to go. I've got my graphics laid out. I'm gonna do my side stripes, which is the dust trail. I have Roadrunner birds, standing Roadrunner bird and running Roadrunner birds I have to apply, as well as the world famous air grabber shark's tooth that go on the side of the N96 air grabber door. When the temperature keep, as it gets hotter and you're trying to do graphics, you've gotta be able to compensate for that. All right, you, you gotta know your limitations. Clint Eastwood, Heartbreak Ridge. And you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. If it gets too hot, you just can't put them on because you're going to absolutely waste the decal. But as long as you're under like 100 degrees or somewhere close to that, what you have to do is you have to get a solution on there that's either thicker, like if I'm using the app gel, I'll put it on real, real heavy so I got a ton of time to play with it. Or if I'm using my soap, my soapy solution, I'll just add more soap to it so I even have longer for it to set up. Because as you take away from those two elements, it dries faster. It dries too fast and you can't get it back up, you're calling Phoenix and ordering another set of graphics. If, uh, you know, uh, I love painting cars. I've done it forever. I don't do it as much. Will's a good painter. He's taken over. I've taught him how to paint really well. Graphics are great because you're an instant hero. You lay that stripe out on a billboard car. You lay out a big, beautiful black billboard against a silver gunmetal gray car. You're a winner. Lay out a black one against an orange, a winner. Absolutely one of the most gorgeous and quickest transformations of a car are the decals and the stripes. So I'd probably have to say my funnest part is probably doing decals. Yeah, 
the graphics are completely done on a Roadrunner. There's always a little bit of touch up that has to be done. Will's gonna come in early and do that. But after that, this thing's ready to be revealed. And there's the Zinks right there. The Zinks are really nice folks. I've met them a few times over the last few years uh, while we're working on their car. It's a happy looking crowd right there. Hi, Hello. How are Haven't you? Haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? Good. We're nice excited. Shelly, good. Terry, uh, the husband, he's a big time car lover, and uh, the wife just is as sweet as can be. So it's going to be nice to see him again. Yep. Yeah, and then we have our nephew and his wife and uh, their daughter visiting, and so we Aww, brought them with us so up at cool. their first time up to Oregon. So. so you belong to these two? Yes. Oh, very nice. Yes. <laughs> so car reveals are my favorite part of our job. We work all year to see the client's face when we give the car back. So it's our motivation behind what we do, and it's the big payoff for us. So I can't wait to see their face when we give their car back. We'll see if we can make some smiles and I think you can. maybe a tear or two. Yeah. I hope so, yeah. People love crying. You guys, y'all love it yeah. when they cry, right? Uh, it's always exciting when customers come to pick up their car. You know, the anticipation of what the car looks like. I don't think they've come out to really check on it at all. They're fairly local, so it's only a couple hour drive from where they're coming from. But I'm excited for them to get here, check out the car. Uh, the paint job, you know, it's just like every other one. It's gorgeous. The car looks good. It's been a nice sunny day, and that yellow is really going to pop. All right, let's do it. Let's head That's out right. that way. Willie, ha <laughs> I slipped the jab. I'm going to slip the jab. I don't know. Um. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I don't get as nervous as I used to during these car reveals. Uh, I used to back in the early days, especially honestly with some of the old crew and the, and the old team because there were things that weren't necessarily getting done 100% unless I checked on them. But now I know we're at 100%. All, all cylinders are hitting, metaphorically speaking. So I'm not nervous about anything. I think that if that owner comes in and sees something that I missed, I want to know about it. I don't want it shuffled under the rug. I want his feedback. And if it's negative or positive, I still want to hear it. You got the magic hat on. I ain't going to punch a man with magic hat. <laughs> got the magic frosty and all that we'll winterland. The, the reason we took the car on, uh, it means a lot to him. He had one very similar to it when he was in high school. Okay, so my question is, you had one of these cars almost identical to this yep. years ago. Yeah. When did you buy it? When was? How old were you when you first drove it? I bought it when I was uh, 18 years old. I had a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, the Lemon Twist color Roadrunner, and she was fascinated by the car. She didn't particularly care for me that much, but she <laughs> loved the yellow Roadrunner, and so it was a way of getting her to uh, go out with me. We ended up getting married in that car. I was racing the car, you know, probably more than I should. And, uh, and the engine ended up freezing up on us. And we had no money. I mean, we were, both of us were just dirt poor. We ended up uh, saying, well, we've got to get rid of the Roadrunner because we can't afford to fix it. And for about 15 years, I looked around trying to find the car. And I was looking online, and I found this car. It had all the equipment on it that, uh, that our original car had. So I, I went ahead and bought the car, and then we contacted uh, Mark and said, you know, we've got this kind of love story with the car, and uh, and we wanted to uh, find out if it could be restored. And uh, he said yes. He said yes, and so that's what brought Just us. Just like me, I said yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we've taken a lot of steps on this thing to make it as original as it would have been on the showroom floor. I know it's not the same car. Yeah. But if you bought a Lemon Twist yellow N96 Air Grabber Roadrunner when you were a kid, this is about as close as you're going to get to it right here. Excellent. So I'm excited to yeah. reveal it to you. And I understand you're going to drive it home from here. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and he done. retired last week. So now. There you go. He'll be driving it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether we're uh, excited or nervous, you know, because yeah. it... Uh, what if it's disappointing? Yeah. I, I, I'm confident that it won't be, but, you you know, it's been so long, and we've yeah. been looking forward to this. You get that anxious feeling about how's everything going to be and what's it going to be like. Yeah. So uh, I know both of us are really excited to, to see it. And drive it. And drive it, yeah. <laughs> that was just amazing color. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Oh my god. What do you think 
that. Oh my gosh. Is that gorgeous? It is. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh my, oh my gosh. Pretty amazing, huh? Awesome. It looks brand new. It does. Oh my I know. gosh. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? It is. <laughs> Isn't that just oh, it's, too cool? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I think it's just it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's a culmination of so many things to do this. I mean, the right team, Dave and Will and yeah. Alyssa and Royal the when he's paint here. It's so beautiful. Oh, look. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's correct oh, for the gosh. 70s. Supposed to have a little birdie. And then the dust That's trail right. yeah. ends into here like that. The oh, thing yeah. that was most important to me in working with Mark was to be able to express to him the importance of this car to us and the fact that we really were putting it in his hands. And I wanted to make sure that the car was done, it was done right. It's been great working with him. Mark was telling us all the details and showing us all the markings that he made sure were there, and it's like a brand new car. It's like we're back in 1970. It is, isn't that so fun? That's what I just love. I think it's such a neat thing that this is all fully functional air grabber stuff. The car was an air grabber car, so we put it all back on. It's got all your date coded correct original Gates hoses and replica upper and lower and heater hose. Your date coded third quarter of 69 spark plug wires. This is just so awesome. This is just so awesome. Take it out for a drive? Take it out for a drive. Right. I love it. Yes, sir. All right. You guys ready to go? We're ready to go, Rock Mark. Rock on. All right. Making dreams come true. Bye, guys. It's like our honeymoon. <laughs> the sound. I tell you, it brings back a lot of memories. Drive like you mean it. Oh, I like the good old days. I know, yeah. Feels good. Gosh, it runs great. Wow, it, it really does. Oh my gosh, worth the wait. Yeah, I'm gonna put up the air grabber, see how that works. There, there it is. Goes. <laughs> I want to see flames. When can you punch it? <laughs> I want to punch it. I'm gonna punch it. <laughs> the car is so awesome. It's better than what we thought we were. Yes. Doing. It feels tight, the suspension's great. I got to drive it. She got to drive it, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can do this. Now she's decided maybe we should uh, renew our vows and uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> do it all. It was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I got it down. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. I know. <laughs> well, you know, it's really easy to shift with this pistol. I know. Okay, now. Well, I you know. always liked that in the other one. Yeah, I did. Well, there's no place to turn around. <laughs> Too bad. We'll just have to keep going. Just have to keep going. The car looks great, drives great. We look great in the car. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. We're a cute couple. You know, if there's any coyotes on the way back to Bend, yeah, uh, watch out. We're going to be able to outrun them. <laughs>